Woman of Culture 365 presents the Mia Almond Show, hosted by yours truly, Coach Mia, a certified master life coach, health advocate, self-empowerment educator, who's sharing an in-depth conversation on how to master self, important issues that affect our mental wellness, health and wellness tips, to embracing and celebrating our cultural heritage, and much more. And now, here's Coach Mia. Welcome back to the Mia Almond Show on Glow 365. Thank you all for tuning in. Today's show is hosted by Coach Don Hewitt, a certified holistic coach, Coach Sophie G, a certified life, life purpose, and forgiveness coach, and our guest host is Leonard Burge, a soul therapist, a psycho-spiritual coach, and holistic educator, along with myself. Hello, Glow Team. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Good to see you all. Likewise, my brother. Yes, Glow Team. I'm glad to have you all back again for another amazing show. But folks, I just want to remind you that the following show is intended only for mature audience. So viewers discretion is advised. Now, when it comes to balancing love in a relationship, sex and wellness, it can be very challenging, but it is essential for our happiness. It's important to prioritize that balance by creating health boundaries, make room for disagreements and understanding, focus on encouraging yourself and your partner, have emotional check-ins, establish some date nights, focus on your health, and stop looking for perfection in yourself and in your relationship. Also, maintain mental wellness with daily self-care regimens. Now, let's take a quick break, but stay tuned. When we return, we're going to talk about the major factors that cause stressors and strains in a relationship today. Things you need to be aware of. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome. My name is Ronnie Walker. Allow me to introduce you to the MrRelationshipManCave.com website. Listen, gentlemen, today is not the day to show up halfway for yourself and for the woman you aim to please. Nutrition and mental health are important to fully experience a healthy and exceptional relationship. As a man, we want to make sure we have what is needed to start and finish strong. So go to www.MrRelationshipManCave.com and explore the possibilities. Okay. Come out your cave and go into that cave. Welcome back. As a soul therapist, I'm confronted daily with the challenge of helping individual persons and couples psychologically in a world riddled with psychosociopathology. And it's getting worse. As we usher into the second month of this new year, It's not without apprehension as we're knee deep in disease and death in the midst of a global pandemic, struggles over vaccine mandates and passports, misinformation and suppression of truth, economic insecurity and inequities, voter suppression and insurrection, environmental catastrophes, police community tensions, and an epidemic of xenophobia, that is suppression of anyone considered to be the other. Now, many psychologists and counselors, myself included, report that this has placed a great strain on marriages and relationships between significant others. To cope with these trying times, couples are struggling to discover, nurture, or rekindle love, intimacy, and emotional fulfillment within self and in their unions. Couples are also striving to enhance the lifestyles of wellness, recognizing that this is what is needed to strengthen their personal health and well-being the love bonds in their relationships, and their ability to cope and succeed in society. Sophie? Yes, it is. Um, it, it, um, that's, that's the type of society we're living in right now. Um, and you know what? With all that being said, today's show, we're going to be having a really special guest 
who's going to be jumping in and uh, she's going to be back here with us. She's been here with us before, not long ago, where she shared her, shared her expertise. Um, she is Dr. Suzanne Kay from Austin, Texas. So we're going to be talking to her today. She's a sexologist. She's a sex educator. She specializes in intimacy, coaching, surrogate partnership. Um, she's also the producer of Human Sexuality and co-founder of the Institute of Mind, Body, and Therapy. And we're looking forward to talking with her. She's going to be jumping on any moment now. And we just can't wait to hear all the great stuff that she has to say. Back at you. Well, okay. Well, you, uh, you know, there's, uh, we realized that uh, I've, I've, you know, heard you before talk about the resolve that it takes to, to go into this new year and push forward. And you've spoken about mastering wellness, a wellness routine, making it a priority, balancing the nurturing our body, mind, and soul. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes the elephant in the room is the question of what role sex and love plays mm -hmm. in this process. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's what Dr. K is here to talk about. Therefore, that is the subject of today's show, specifically self-love in relationship to loving others, sex and intimacy in relationship to love, and the role of wellness lifestyles and habits in relationship to forever, what you call forever love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, of course, as you said, our special guest is uh, Dr. K. So, Sophie, uh, where should we start? I think we should start by um, introducing our special guest right about now. Um, we're going to be talking about self-love, sex intimacy and wellness, as you said. But um, I think let's just jump right into it um, uh, and, and get a little bit more understanding about exactly what Dr. K thinks um, with her 30 years experience, what exactly the important, importance is of, based on her experience of being in the field as a sexologist. I think we should just right, jump right into it. Yes, Coach Sophie G, let's jump right into the conversation. Let me start by saying, you know, like lovers, we know that all sexologists are not the same. Dr. K, what makes what you do and how you do it different from conventional sex therapy? Well, thank you for jumping right in. <laughs> Let me tell you and your listeners what does make our our mission. It's It's a mission for me. It's not my work. The difference is that we incorporate what I have come to call the neck up piece of who we are, along with the neck down. Now, when I started in, in the mid 80s, wanting to bring touch therapy to the psychotherapy office, it was just totally unheard of. But we did begin uh, in Wayne, Pennsylvania, putting hands on people that were coming in for neck up issues. And as we see today, integrative medicine is on board. We know you have to treat the whole body. You can't just treat sections of it. And that's now what we're riding on the tails of the medical field doing integrative psychotherapy. Well, is it not true, Dr. K, that some people find that somewhat controversial, this whole touch thing? And how effective uh, has it been in your practice? Oh, well, I have 30 years of stories, I could tell you. In fact, I've written a book about it. So that, that will be available within the next few weeks, I think. Um, <clears throat> what, what I continue to stand for throughout all those decades of people looking at me sideways, some people trusting me, some people opening up uh, to the ancient wisdom of how do we treat the mind, body, and the soul. You know, it's all connected. And so it's, it's, been, uh, it's been an interesting journey of people who have embraced me and kept me going. People would show up and fall off and show up and fall off and show up and fall off because we were so controversial. But now I'm getting calls um, from folks from way back because I've been around a long time. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Dr. K, uh, first of all, congratulations on your book. And um, 
when it comes to self-love in relationships, to what extent have you found that people tend to love someone else more than they love themselves? And is that a healthy or effective or sustainable thing? It's, it's certainly what we're told or taught that you should love others and take care of others uh, almost before yourself. That would be selfish if you took care of yourself first. My, um, my program begins with what I call you with you, because that is where it starts. You can't give away what you don't have for yourself. So it is taking a look at what I call plain damn you. <laughs> we take what was your, your uh, nurturing and your biology? What did you come in with and what did you get as a young person? Things that you had no say or control over. But then there's another piece that I call plain damn you, who is you with you seeking inside of your nature and your nurture what fits and what doesn't fit and picking and choosing so that you are aiming towards what Maslow's psychology theory is, self-actualized adult. And that's who you want to bring to a relationship as a healthy self-actualized adult. You know, it reminds me, Dr. K, of being on an airplane when the, um, the oxygen mask comes down. And what do they tell you? Yes. Exactly. Put yours on first, because if, if you try to help other people and you don't have yours on, you won't be able to. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, there's actually um, an old book um, by Dr. Martin, uh, a song, and um, a song that goes, uh, "You're nobody." It's like nobody. You're nobody till somebody loves you. Yeah. And uh, with all that being said before, you know, what our brother Lenny just said and what you just said about putting on your, your oxygen mask first, it is so important because self-love is, is, is so, such an important and imperative um, aspect of really knowing how to love, um, you know, and, and, and I think it's important that we remember that. And I think, you know, we're, I know we're going to be touching a very, well, I want, hope that we'll be touching a very important um, aspect of that in regards to self-love. Uh, which is going to come up later on in the show um, in regards to we're going to be asking you your opinion on how it is to really self-love physically because we do know that there are actually some um, uh, controversial differences when it comes to um, moral morality in the field and we're going to be asking you later on in regards to this what's your take on self-love physically um, morally uh, as a professional sexologist in regards to um, masturbating, as well as excess sex. And Dr. And Dr. K, uh, do you find that there are people who come to you who, who actually believe that you are nobody till somebody loves you, as Sophie mm -hmm. was pointing out? Um, I don't know that somebody's used those actual words, but their behaviors and that they're in their 30s, 40s, or 50s and have never been with a partner says to me that they got those messages somehow, that they're, they are not worthy of love or that no one could love them. So they're, they feel like they're nobody. <laughs> nobody loves them. Mm -hmm. Dr. K, often we hear that true love is unconditional. However, we are also told we must set minimum standards for acceptable treatment by others. For example, not being abused. In your view, based on your experience, what is unconditional love? So I just want to back up one second, Sophie, and answer your question about how I teach or feel about self-pleasuring. Mm -hmm. And I, I want folks to know that it is absolutely the healthiest connection and relationship you can have with yourself. Because when we come in with, with guilt or shame or the shoulds around how we are with our own bodies, how can we take something that we don't understand or we think is dirty or something's wrong with it that how do you take that to a partner or lover so i absolutely agree with knowing your body in all the ways 
that are available. And that does lead to how do I feel about unconditional love? Um, I don't agree. <laughs> I've worked with too many survivors. I've worked with people who are in um, situations where they're told they obey their man uh, or their partner. And lots of things happen because we're, we're taught that it's unconditional love that you are to stand, continue to stand for that relationship or stand for um, the, the hope that if you stay, things will work out. And so <clears throat> I teach communication around conditions. People have to share where their boundaries are and then we negotiate them. There's a dance between all the way over here to the negative all the way over here to the positive, and there's a dance that can happen in the middle that is where health lies. Well said. So uh, is it not true, Dr. K, that there are some who define unconditional love as uh, love with no strings, you know, and not necessarily the case that you have to put up with abuse, mm -hmm. but if your loving has strings, you know, when it doesn't go your way, now you don't love them anymore. Well, again, there comes the hardest thing for people to do is sit down and communicate. Communication is our largest sex organ, in my opinion. If you can talk about sex, you can talk about every, anything. Mm -hmm. say sex and money, those are the two reasons people get divorced. Mm -hmm. um, in my world, it's mostly around sex. <laughs> um, so it's, it is standing for yourself and yet being in a relationship just like if you were in a business partnership, sometimes there's negotiating tables, right? They meet for days on end and negotiate till they come to agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't necessarily have that as a tool. And when couples come to us, I'll tell them, we're gonna build you a toolbox. And in that toolbox is gonna be the foundation of verbal communication and physical communication. You know, Dr. K, um, uh, in terms of that communication, you know, often there's pressure on people to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we suspect that some people are in love with the idea of being in love. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I also suspect that many of your clients, they profess to be in love, yet that still they're dealing with dysfunction in their relationships. And how does that relate to having great sex when there's the possibility of dysfunction in the relationships who of people who profess to be in love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a juggling act and it's a communication barrier that we have to overcome when people say, I love, I love him so much. I do. I, I, but I don't want to have sex anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it is true that men are wired differently about what sex means. And a lot of men feel that if you reject them and you don't want to have sex, it's with them, it's because you don't love them. And so it is a sorting through and again, finding the middle road. Okay, so we won't, we can't do this, but how about we do this? And that's where the negotiation comes in and people say, well, that's not sexy. You know, I don't want to have to negotiate. And I say, do you remember when you were dating and what was the, all the negotiation went on about what night you want to go out? What time? What, where do you want to go? What do you want to have for dinner? What should, when should I pick you up? Right. It was all negotiation. Mm -hmm. And they think once you're married, now you're supposed to read each other's minds and it's all supposed to fall into place. And so we have to we start back in the beginning and teach skills that are both verbal and physical. It's interesting because he's, you know, you're saying that because, you know, going back to the last time you were here with us, you know, you were talking about the, the five love languages and the importance of communicating because we, you, you, you kind of, you taught us how to, you enlightened us as to the five different ways that we actually show love. You know, some are physical, some are words of aspiration, you know, uh, you know, so some are uh, physical touch, some is, some happens to do with uh, communicating, words of affirmation, quality time and all of that. 
And I think um, if we remember that, and, and I'm sure, you know, if you didn't watch it before, you can go back and, and, and watch that show because it was a really awesome show. Then you will realize that, especially now being this season of love, heart, mm -hmm. you know, month in so many ways, Valentine's month, day coming up, you know, the wellness of taking care of our heart, which contributes to our better soul and mind, that if we really know how to communicate with our loved one, we are able to identify when they're actually trying to speak love to us. And sometimes trying to speak love to us means we need to be still or touch more um, or communicate more or just spend a little bit more quality time in areas that the other person can actually feel that um, and know that that's what you're doing as opposed to rejecting, but you're actually trying to show them how to love you. Um, is that fair to say? It's, yeah, and for me, I, I teach clients too that love spelled backwards is evolve mm -hmm. and so it is an evolution and it changes it's not going to be the same as when you were dating or when you were first married or after the kids and now menopause and you know whatever all those factors are that has us having to continue to negotiate and evaluate and find what our our needs, wants, and desires, and how we can you know, take care of the relationship by taking care of ourselves and each other. Um, you had mentioned about menopause, um, Dr. K. You know, some people feel that it's not possible for women to have a healthy sex life after menopause. Um, they think sex is only up to an age, you know, um, <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh about that one. Um, but anyway, um, do you find that to be true? What? Define healthy. Because, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, because it's a broad term. It's a huge word. Healthy doesn't mean because their, their vaginal dryness is in the way. Uh, does it mean that, you know, they really now without hormones on board are not interested in being orgastic. Maybe they just want to play and do other things and don't have to have an orgasm. Hmm. We're so focused on orgasm because of the underpinning of sex is for procreational purposes only that everybody has to have an orgasm. Well, as we age, so things don't work like they used to, but does that mean we throw everything out when touch is our most basic need? Um, when we're born, all of our touch nerve endings are in place. When, as we age out and up till the time of death, our nerve endings and our skin never changes. So it's about touch. It isn't just about, I hope I can say this, pelvis is banging together. <laughs> <laughs> when you mention touch, it reminds me of, um, of uh, intimacy. So before we continue let's, uh, and get into that, let's take a quick look, take a quick break and look at another one of our master coaches. And when we return, we're going to examine the role of intimacy in sex and love. Hey, it's your girl, Coach Lady Mia, inviting you to check out some shows on Glow 365 TV, starting with yours truly, The Mia Allman Show. Holistic Health Show with Coach Dawn, Sisters of Faith with Coach Lady Q, and The Sophie G Show with Coach Sophie G. Streaming on YouTube at Glow 365 TV Shows every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, rebroadcast on Caribbean Rhythms Radio online at crrnetworkinc.com every Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. The Jamaican American Association of Central Florida invites you to join us as we celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month on Sunday, June 11th from 4 till 6 p.m at the Silver Star Christian Church, 7510 Silver Star Road, Orlando, Florida. There will be refreshments, 
music, entertainment, prizes, and lots of fun. If you have a special talent and would like to take part in our talent contest, please complete the form on jaaocf.com. Call 407-292-3719. 407-486-5001 or 917-463-9496 for additional information. Best of all, admission is free and open to everyone. Please consider becoming a sponsor or a donor by visiting jaaocf.com to benefit our efforts to support and to build stronger communities, both locally and internationally. Dr. K, I understand that in your practice, you find that many people don't realize the difference between sex and real intimacy. In your view, what is, is there a difference? What is the difference in, in the value of each? And, how can people work together to experience uh, more intimacy? Yeah, the, uh, again, I think I mentioned that for me, um, our communication is our largest sex organ. Are we able to talk about what we like, what we don't like, plan date nights together, uh, hear the other person's uh, concerns or, um, desires. And so for me, sharing on those kinds of levels is into me see. And that's what intimacy is. In our culture, we roll everything into meaning pelvises banging together. You know, it's like intimacy, making love, having sex, getting it on, whatever all those terms are. Um, and we roll it into one 10% of our body activity. We forget about all the other 90% where all the juice is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I tell people when we're looking to find where is that place where we can do eye gazing, where we can sit and look in each other's eyes without laughing or giggling, but really get into each other's eyes or sit back to back with their arms hooked together and say five things they love or appreciate about their partner. There's a song by Dan Hill. Sometimes when we touch, the honesty's too much, mm. and I have to hide my eyes and cry. Mm. Because it's that when we have that deep intimacy, it's what we all really want. Mm -hmm. But we, we, I don't know, we've lost it or demonized it, or it's it's been replaced. Because we've been overtaken, you know, when sex, when anything is suppressed, it pushes out in ways that are not good or healthy for us. And that's what I think has happened with our sexuality. It has been pushed down. We don't educate our children. We, 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 we talk about bodies with giggles and, you know, silliness. And so we have created um, generations of folks who do not have a, a healthy relationship with their bodies and are able to share safely, like intimacy, where the depth of intimacy is. You know, you know, we, we talked about it earlier. It was mentioned, um, you know, things has changed so, so much. Um, you know, we forget how to talk. We forgot how to relate to people and that exercise that you just mentioned about you know even being behind each other and just uh counting on five things uh, that we like or dislike about each other um that's what you relate to as the talk um what are some of the things you think we should really and truly i know you just touched on but what are some other things you think we should really talk about Anna? um how can we go about really and truly revealing it and what should we keep private um to create that kind of intimacy any advice you could give us there Hmm. I don't know that there's a carte blanche answer for your question. You know, we're all so complex. Uh, the stories I've heard, what pe people, children have survived uh, through 
their childhoods and beyond. N into me see is know me. Give me a safe place where I can share my my fears, where I can share my needs, wants, and desires. And and I've worked with people that get some very interesting um, fetishes, for lack of a better word, uh, that they attained because of their upbringing or what happened to them as children. We get locked in those first five years. We're little computers. And we're downloading everything through our senses, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we feel. We don't have cognition on board till we're like, you know, five, six, seven years old. And so we've already started to generate and create who we are inside of the you with you. And if we don't have permission to explore it or understand it or share it, it can put a it can put in front of me a 55 year old virgin who can't be touched because his mother was very nervous with him as a baby. And so he's very ticklish for anybody to touch him. Mm -hmm. So there's the stories, you know, I, I don't know if I'm answering your question, except that, you know, we're all so complex and unique. You are, you are, you are. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's um, fair to say that the um, necessity to have these kind of open conversations in the beginning um, of getting to know each other as opposed to waiting until knowing that we have our people who have these kind of a feelings, these kind of a um, re necessity, re required feelings to be able to feel whole in a relationship, um, that we have these conversations early as opposed to waiting until two, five, five years down the line when, you know, you, it comes up or you feel like you have to, to share it. And um, based upon your profession, do you think that... Um, if this is done or practiced at an earlier time, that it prevents infidelity, people stepping out or trying to explore because, because of fear of being ridiculed or not wanting to um, feel shunned or shut down by their partner? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, it, it is endless what the damage or the effects are. And as you were speaking, I was listening with a different ear about education and permission. Mm -hmm. If we were to start early with children and teach them the names of their body parts and teach them to respect their own bodies and to make sure other people respect their bodies, you know, starting from babyhood on, you know, people ask me, when do you start talking about sex or bodies? It's a, Right from the beginning, you don't you don't teach them incorrect language for their body parts. Mm -hmm. And it, it goes from there to how we are raised with a feeling of um, shame or disconnect. And so it starts early with education. So it sounds like that may be one of the mm. reasons that uh, people, people find it so difficult to talk about. Mm -hmm sex yeah what i'm saying what i'm saying is is that with you know all of those hang-ups a lot of them come from you know our upbringing and and it becomes much more difficult to talk about sex you know and we live in a society where uh as much sex as there is that sells everything it seems to be a taboo to actually uh talk about it no just do it you know mm -hmm. uh, uh don i've heard you talk about the selling of sex Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think this ties in with the whole, um, the last few questions as far as like the educational aspect of it, like how can we be, as Len, as Len was, um, was alluding to, how can we be living in a time when sex is used to sell everything, but yet at the same time, it's still taboo. It's still a taboo subject for so many people. And um, how, how does this type of dichotomy affect your work, Dr. K? It affects me <laughs> because when folks come to me and they have been involved in trafficking or, um, a cult or some of these other negative 
sexuality that's being pushed out because again we don't embrace it we don't um honor our bodies for what they do we didn't make this up somebody else created it and and so that we have we're pushing down something that is innately and intrinsically part of who we are and so the self-hatred the um, the hurt the the negatives that all come out of again we're back to love yourself first and so it's such a huge um worldwide except for some of the scandinavian countries they've got they've got some other good stuff going on <laughs> um but the the fact that we're so scared of bodies and we're here uh, we came here to be in the experience of being in a body and you know, we didn't make it up that the clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings. I mean, <laughs> right? So who do we blame and say, this is a test to see if you'll give in? When we, when we say, educate your kids about drugs so they don't do them, we say, don't talk to your kids about sex or they'll do it. Well, the truth, the truth be told, in spite of all these taboos about sex, the most popular sites on the internet are sites uh, dealing with pornography. Yeah. And so the question is, to what extent does, them, does this impact love and sex or dysfunction of sex, dysfunction of relationships and the clients that you serve? Yeah. Again, it's that thing that what we push down, what we suppress is going to push out in mm -hmm. negative behaviors. And that's what's happening. When I have a, a client in front of me whose whose parents educated them about their bodies, I mean it's it's such a phenomenon, <laughs> and uh, the therapy is totally different. That we have to start at the beginning of accepting themselves from the neck down, but when we have folks that have come in and they had a healthy. Um, parenting opportunity where they were taught their body parts and taught how to stay safe and they could come home and tell their mom, hey, teacher so-and-so touched my, my behind today. You know, otherwise we bury it, we suppress it, and it just is pushing out into all this negativity. Wow. You know, um, today we're, we're living in a society that we have... Um, you know, it's supposed to be the melting pot, uh, but yet still there, we find we're living in what would be considered like the alphab alphabetical soup uh -huh. um, because of the different uh, gender identifications that are no current in our world. And, I'm, I, you know, and I mean this in a, in a very affectionate way where, um, you know, people want to be uh, regarded or still have exclusive relationships and feel loved and loved by, you know, um, who, for who they are and who they feel and how they, you know, just to have fulfilling ability um, and a healthy long-term relationship. Um, it plays um, and the ability to create intimacy in, in, in couples um, because they're misunderstood or persons in the society. What exactly is, is, is <laughs> you know, panorism? And what role do you think you have or have it found that it plays right now and the ability to, for couples to feel, um, be able to sustain a healthy relationship? Well, there's that word again, exactly. <laughs> you know, we're just all so different. Um, I mean, it can be to the point where a partner has a fetish that they've never been able to disclose Mm -hmm. and be able to tell their partner about this fetish and figure out can they can they figure it out together and work on it together it, i'm sorry to sound vague but there's just uh, there's just as many people as there are there's there's stories and what people are looking for you know we're raised that you're supposed to have supposed to have this certain kind of connection or relationship or 
you know, there's so many supposed tos around being a successful woman or being a successful man or being a successful, you use the term healthy marriage or relationship. And um, some people would think that what two other people are doing together is not healthy, but mm -hmm. for them it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why my book is, am I normal if? Because mm -hmm. we don't fit in that box called normal. And that box called normal changes. Mm -hmm. But yet we're so bent on either politically or religiously mm -hmm. or ageism. Uh, however, we put people in boxes. Mm -hmm. So, Sophie, you did mention uh, panamorism. What, what exactly is that, panamorism? Panerotica is... Um, the love of everything. Like you can, you turn on that just about everything. A short break first. And when we return, we will look a little more at this question of whether sexual pleasure is compatibility with not just wellness, but spirituality. We'll be right back. Hey, this is your girl, Sophie G your real sister from The Sophie G Show. And I am giving a shout out to KUO Magazine. They're dedicated to promoting a greater level of wellness in all of us. Yes, they bring out that glow. Caribbean Under One Magazine features different cultures and personalities of both men and women from within our own communities, sharing biographies and their personal stories and challenges even their secrets as to how they overcame the toughest obstacles they faced with the hope of inspiring others. Caribbean Under One magazine gives back and they acknowledge by honoring the ribbon of Survivors 365 by bringing awareness to those who have overcome and struggled with chronic illnesses and conditions. They inspire. KUO encourages and reminds us all of the true importance of having that glow in all our lives. A greater level of wellness. This is your girl, Sophie G, your real sister, who promises to always keep it real. For me not lie, I me not try. And I say, get your subscription today. Just log on, tell your friends, tell your family, to join in and become a member to subscribe to KUOMagazine.com today. Check me out on the Sophie G Show. Your girl, Sophie G, your real sister. Hello and welcome. My name is Ronnie Walker. Allow me to introduce you to the Mr. Relationship Man Cave .com website. Listen, gentlemen, today is not the day to show up halfway for yourself and for the woman you aim to please. Nutrition and mental health are important to fully experience a healthy and exceptional relationship. As a man, we want to make sure we have what is needed to start and finish strong. So go to www. Mr. Relationship Mancave.com and explore the possibilities. Okay, let's get back to this uh, question of uh, wellness, uh, spirituality, and sexuality. Uh, you know, we live in a culture where uh, a lot of times in religious circles, there are differing opinions on what's moral, what's not moral, you know, um, even though many of our uh, preachers and teachers. Uh, seem to have no problem with sex. So Dr. K, what have you found about this whole issue of sexual pleasure and spiritual spirituality? Uh, well, are they compatible? Do you find that there are people are having differences in that area? Well, um, spirituality is a big term. <laughs> it's very broad. I would say folks who adhere to more of a spiritual view of um, creation, the Godhead or uh, nature, 
have a more open and accepting of that we are we are physical beings, we are sexual beings, we are spiritual beings. As far as religions go, and they all have their different uh, guidelines around what deems uh, inappropriate behavior or even ungodly behavior. Uh, why we separate out this gift that got us here and why we've demonized bodies i think it boils down to it's a way to control us mm. that's just my experience that's what my history tells me from books that i've read on spirituality and different religions and the bible i think it just boils down to a way to control us and control our bodies. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so Dr. K, um, in summary, in your opinion, what is healthy sex and love and what role does it play in a person's overall health and well-being in body, mind, and spirit? Hmm. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, healthy sexuality again begins with you with you are you are you in tune with your body do you walk with it in a way that uh, it's just you and me buddy you know like I love you thank you all the parts not just the way our hair looks today but all the parts that we were given and so healthy sexuality is is almost to the place where you're not really thinking about it. Like, this is just who I am. This is how I was designed. My creator made me this way. Again, 8,000 nerve endings, no accidents. We didn't make it up. Um, how do we reconcile the drives that can be um, hurtful or damaging? Is through communication. It's not to push it under the rug or say, don't do that, or don't you come around here looking at that magazine, or, you know, these things that we we do to raise the curiosity. <laughs> like, oh, I wonder why I'm not allowed to look at this. You know, so it's just, it's like I teach all my couples too, and it is with our, our children and with our own relationship with our body is communication. Does this have to do with controlling women? Uh would you say, uh, in this, yes. you know, the type of culture that we're in right now? I, I would have to go that that's certainly a huge part of it. But yeah. also, um, there are a lot of people who, who find that uh, they need specific substances, so to speak, in order to get it up or to get it going. Yeah. Uh, drugs like Viagra, herbal aphrodisiacs, uh, intoxic intoxicants, and then some... Uh, look to certain uh, methods like tantric yoga to make for a more satisfying, healthier sex life. Uh, in your work, in your clinic, uh, how, what have you found out about, you know, people who have the need to, to use stimulants in order to perform sexually? Well, it, it can come from a number of things. It can come from some childhood trauma or something that um, landed in the psyche from religions and people have too much guilt and shame to get past it on their own. Um, I'm not opposed to stimulants. I think if people, that's what they want to do. I have folks that come here that are fairly young, like in their early 30s, and they can't have erections without help. Mm -hmm. And we have narrowed it down to that it was early training and church and that. And he was just so stressed about, oh, I have to get away from these. This is just, I'm, I'm not supposed to be taking these. And I just said one day, I took him by the hands. I said, what if it's just okay? to use the aid and he started crying 
because I gave him permission to stop being so hard on himself, like the shoulds and the have tos or the healthy. What works for you with you? Well, you know, sometimes uh, we need a crutch uh, for a minute to to get back to walking. And, um, you know, uh, the real issue is that's part of a process sometimes. I think we've sort of come to the end of the line, unless any of our co-hosts have any more questions. If not, Sophie, can you summarize in the tradition as you do? Will you give us a brief synopsis of what you feel we've learned today? Bring us on home, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is, you know, um, you know, I want to say, Dr. K, Suzanne K, it's always a delight having you, you know, on the the the, the show, this platform, because you give so much uh, information and clarity as to some of the things that are important for healthy relationships, um, and and you know, sexually speaking, and you know, based upon your experience in relationship, and and I think one, what we need to remember is that um, in this time that we're living in. Uh, the importance of well-being. You know, this platform is about bringing people back to a greater level of wellness, um, hence the ornate glow. And just remember that whatever we put into um, our system, our bodies, our, our relationships, our life is what we're going to get out. Um, and we're going we're gonna to transfer into our relationships intimately with the people who are supposed to be closest to us. You know, I think taking from this the, 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 the relevance of remembering that when it, no matter who we want to be identified as, no matter what alphabet number we want to be called or referred to, the, first we have to, as was mentioned before, remember that self-love is so imperative to one by putting on our oxygen mask first. If we don't love ourselves, we can't love nobody else. And we can't really truly share true love if we're not able to express our true self with the persons who are supposed to be the closest, closest to us, intimately speaking. And if we can find comfort in having a spirit, being in a spiritually comfortable spot with ourselves and our creator, whoever, whoever we regard the higher being as, we can then um, try to find some form of a peace within oneself so that we can transfer that into any relationship that we have, intimately speaking. And I think with this being um, Heart Month, Valentine's Month, Heritage Month, if we can tap into what is important to us and heroes that are out there, we're seeing all of the media, social media about um, Black History Month, but it's not just about that. It's about those who we consider heroes. And sometimes we need to find a hero within ourselves. Mm. you know? Try to love yourself first or self first so that we can really be somebody else's hero who's depending on receiving love from us. You know, uh, Martin Luther said, I had a dream, I have a dream. You know, but also Martin Lee also said, listen, man, sometimes you gotta get a little bit of a sexual healing. <laughs> You know, and remember to get that sexual healing, you know, it because it's so good for me. We need to remember um, whenever those blue, blue teardrops are falling, sometimes your st emotional stability needs a little bit of a healing. True self um, to thine own self first be true. Even if it means masturbating as was talked about earlier, it's okay because you gotta love yourself first to be able to share. I think this is just Sophie G talking now. Let somebody know how they can love you back. Communication is important. Talk. That exercise about being in each other's space and staring into each other's eyes is a window to our soul. Right? And if you feel shy about doing it, then hold each other by the back <laughs> and yet still speak the words out loud that you need know you want to be heard or you want to be, you want to share without a you know judgment-free zone. And that's what I take away from here today. Let's practice that right now. It's still the beginning of the year. We still got time. We're still practicing new um, uh, resolutions. Let's start with ourselves and the ones closest to us by being patient with yourself and being patient with one another to love, love unconditionally. That's my take. Coming up next month, our Glow 365 team will be launching their own weekly show with Holistic Health with Coach Dawn, Sisters of Faith with Coach Lady Q, 
the Sophie G Show with Coach Sophie G, along with myself on the Mia Almond Show. In June will be a four-part series on self-care and how it affects our mental, physical, and spiritual wellness in order to grow and evolve as a person and maintain a healthy lifestyle. You can listen live right here on crrfm.com every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I would like to thank my special guest, Dr. Susan Kay. For more information on her or to schedule a session, please visit online at drsusankey.com. Also, a special thank you to my GLOW team, Coach Dawn, Coach Sophie G, Leonard Burge, and you, the listeners. I'm Coach Lady Mia. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe and well. But first, let me leave you with this quote. We cultivate love when we allow our most vulnerable and powerful selves to be deeply seen and known. And when we honor the spiritual connection that can only be cultivated between two people when it exists, within each one of them. We can only love others as much as we love ourselves. By Brie Brown. Hey, this is your girl, Sophie G, your real sister from the Sophie G Show. And I am giving a shout out to KUO Magazine. They're dedicated to promoting a greater level of wellness in all of us. Yes. They bring out that glow. Caribbean Under One magazine features different cultures and personalities of both men and women from within our own communities, sharing biographies and their personal stories and challenges, even their secrets as to how they overcame the toughest obstacles they faced with the hope of inspiring others. Caribbean Under One magazine gives back and they acknowledge by honoring the Ribbon of Survivors 365 by bringing awareness to those who have overcome and struggled with chronic illnesses and conditions. They inspire. KUO encourages and reminds us all of the true importance of having that glow in all our lives. A greater level of wellness. This is your girl, Sophie G, your real sister, who promises to always keep it real. For me not lie, I'm me not try. And I say, get your subscription today. Just log on. Tell your friends, tell your family to join in and become a member to subscribe to KUOMagazine.com today. Check me out on The Sophie G Show. Your girl, Sophie G. Your real sister. Hey, it's your girl, Coach Lady Mia, inviting you to check out some shows on Glow 365 TV. Starting with yours truly, The Mia Almond Show, Holistic Health Show with Coach Dawn, Sisters of Faith with Coach Lady Q, and The Sophie G Show with Coach Sophie G. Streaming on YouTube at Glow 365 TV Shows every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, rebroadcast on Caribbean Rhythms Radio online at crrnetworkinc.com every Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time.